All right, good morning. Welcome to uh, Building Applications with IOX. It's good to have all of you here this morning. And so some of the things we'll be covering today, we'll be covering uh, um, just in general, um, kind of an overview of applications in fog computing. Um, we'll do an introduction to IOX, um, the platform itself, as well as uh, the enablement platform and uh, IOX applications. And then we'll get into um, a brief overview of building IOX applications in IOX. So what is fog computing? So, yes? His loudspeaker doesn't work. OK. OK. Um, we'll see. He's having trouble with his speaker right here. OK, I'll try to speak up as best I can, um, so that way y'all can hear me better. Um, so what is fog computing? Fog computing is the um, aggregation of all the um, equipment, sensors, compute, data storage, data analytics, everything that is combined to bring in all the data that you have in the field. And so um, what that allows us to do is allows us to be able to process um, all, the, all the data we're collecting from all these different um, areas. And so um, well, why, one of the things is why do we need um, fog computing? Well, fog computing answers a specific problem that we have in the field. So one of the problems is we have a lot of high latency um, and uh, intermittent connections with some of the devices that are in the field, whether it be in transportation or offshore oil rigs or in agriculture or in things like that, um, places that were accumulating data that we've never been accumulating data in the past. We're doing the now and doing the next few years. And so fog computing solves that problem right there. So as you can see the, in this diagram, you can kind of tell that these are some of the areas that we're looking to control some of this data. And so um, when, you have, when you have problems of either bandwidth constrained or in a lot of cases, um, this becomes the problem is you have too much data. And so you have fog computing answers that problem too because what you end up having is you have to do data dumps at the end of the day. Because we're collecting um, exabytes of data as a, um, as a as a world society right now, we're collecting more data than we ever have previously in all the years combined. So we're generating more data, and fog computing answers that question. That's what, and that's what we're looking to find applications and solutions for here. And um, some of the applications for that are kind of the ones I've mentioned before. So you have transportation, agriculture, enterprise, um, manufacturing. And um, a lot of these are different use cases. Some of them are use cases for intermittence or high latency or, not, or connectivity. Others are for um, large amounts of data sets, especially in manufacturing. Manufacturing generates a lot of data, a lot of the sensors on all your different kinds of equipment. Um, these are some of the problems or, or some of the applications in fog computing that we have here. So, and this is where IOX comes in. So what is Cisco IOX? Cisco IOX houses the um, applications, the Linux OS, and then IOS on the actual routers themselves, the routers and the equipment and the switches and everything like that. This allows us to be able to um, get the, uh, ha have the compute to be able to process the data sensor, uh, the data we're getting from the sensors and um, other metrics we're getting from different parts um, of our infrastructure. And so for IOX, we have the, uh, um, the application hosting framework, which we know is CAF. That's, um, that's what houses everything that we, how we process that information on our um, devices. So that's where we, that's where we process, that's where we do all the uh, um, application deployment, that kind of thing right there is, with, is CAF is the what supports um, that infrastructure on the, on the routers and the switches and um, the devices we have there. Um, IOX SDK, that's for the software development side. That's where you develop your applications for um, IOX and then you deploy them to, your, to all your services. Um, other tools we have in there, IOX client, that's your command line tool that you use for deployment. 
um, IOX local manager. That's the uh, um, web page on the router that you would actually use to deploy the route to deploy the applications themselves. And then you have Fog Director. And so Fog Director is your um, your developer operations version of that. Whereas IOX client, IOX local manager will do this on the router directly. Fog, um, Fog Director will connect several um, endpoints together and then deploy your applications to those IOX environments. And so, um, why, and it's one of the things, why would we use Cisco IOX? Well, Cisco IOX allows us that distributed computing model. It allows us, uh, and, and it does it in a familiar way with iOS. So a lot of people are familiar with the iOS operating system that runs with the, switch, the switches and the routers that we're used to with Cisco. Well, the accompaniment with that is iOX, and you have that VM right there that, um, um, that runs directly on the hardware itself and it gets its own CPU resources to be able to then process um, the sensor data and or any other kind of data that's coming into this gateway right here. This is your edge computing fog gateway right here. And this specific one, this is the IR829. Um, but th this allows this aggregation of all, these, uh, all this data and all these sensors and all this information for us. And so, how do, and then, yeah, so how does this help? So um, IOX provides us this platform where um, before you're having to develop the solution on your own. You're saying, I, have the com I, I can put the compute out there myself, but you're also having to develop the frameworks on your own, and you're having to develop the automations on how to deploy those on your own. IOX makes it simple, so that way you can get those applications from uh, your, your team to the field. So when you're de developing these applications to process this data, this is how this gets you there. Um, the other part of it is that it, it makes it, is this helps makes, you, makes it secure. So when you're using these routers um, and you're using these gateways, these edge computing gateways to get back to your network, you create secure connections. And so that's another part of the IoT that's a big problem is, is how do you get that data back but get it back securely? Well. IOX helps you with that because you're already on iOS, and so you have you can connect, make those secure connections back to your infrastructure, and that way you're the only one seeing your data, and there's no manipulation from anyone else from the outside world. Um, and then as and as we've discussed before, it also provides you the tools and code to be able to do the job that you need to do with those devices. <coughs> So the enablement framework is um, some of the things we've touched on briefly before. So you have the, uh, um, the fog directors and the IOX client, and um, you, have, you have these, uh, what, it, what, what that does is that provides you the ability to be able to um, code and develop these uh, solutions and then deploy them quickly. And that's the purpose of the framework. The framework allows this to make it easy, and so that way you're, um, uh, you you have less time. You have let you spend less time on training, and you spend more time on actually just having your teams develop the um, applications you need in the field. And so, and here's parts of the um, some of the capabilities we have. So yeah, so some of the things we talked about. So on development, you have um, the SDK and the IOX client, like I was talking about before. And so if you're doing if you're using platform as a service. Um, we can we can support um, Python and Java, and um, and we and if you and if you're using container if you're using containers on these uh, on the IOX, um, you can also do in C and C plus plus and other frameworks as well. Even you can even write applications in Node.js if that's uh, um, what your team is working on, and so and you can deploy these um, to the router pretty quickly. And then the distri distribution and deployment, and that's handled by, um, kind of as I mentioned previously, the IOX client, local manager, fog director, and then your hosting. The hosting is the CAF itself, and that's what um, houses the containers and the applications and things like that. And then you have the monitoring and management. So that's another feature that is actually pretty important about IOX is it allows um, monitoring and management of all your applications in the fields that um, you've deployed them in. And so if you're running these applications, you can monitor CPU, resources, uh, memory, things like that. You can see how the application's doing. You can download logs uh, regularly to ensure that your application is running the way it should be running. So, let's see. Uh, I can't talk about that. 
So, um, so yeah. So the so the uh, the SDK. This is the this is for like I kind of was saying before. This is for the application development and um, and the available software from software at Cisco. It's for Ubuntu, and that's uh, and that's what it runs there. So I've kind of break. Uh, so also so just a little bit more of a deep dive on the iox client so this is a it's a command line um, client and this is what allows you to interact directly with each individual um, iox environment so it could be a router it could be a virtual instance of iox whatever it is that you have running at the time for your development and you use the iox client directly from the command line and you issue the commands to start stop deploy Activate the application, the full um, life cycle of your application for um, your development, and you can also issue commands to check. Just just like any uh, just like any command line um, application, you can use this also um, monitor your application, check on resources, things like that. And this is a um, this, this kind of shows the overview of um, what we have here. You have the this is where your applications are going to be hosted right there under the under CAF. Um, this shows the applications and development of the um, different segments of, depending on the IOX version you have, um, to be able to um, develop that as well, as well as Fog Director and just the uh, the framework we have to be able to support that um, Fog Portal. And then DevNet is your um, way into um, learning how to develop on these app uh, on these frameworks. And so one of the things I touched on before is you, um, a lot of these applications allow that uh, application lifecycle management. So you have the ability to um, start and stop and deploy and also monitor the, and you also have the ability to monitor these applications as well. And that becomes crucially important when you're having to upgrade and redeploy applications that are either not working correctly or um, there's a problem in the field or you're just seeing new information that you haven't been seeing that you're not processing the same way, and this allows you to be able to do that, as well as uh, um, directly provisioning resources and management. So one of the things you can do when you're deploying your applications is you, can, uh, is you give it specific resources. You tell it how much memory, how many CPU units. Um, you can also statically define the IP address on its um, local network there, so that way you know where those applications are. If you're developing um, uh, multiple services that depend on each other, in those, so multiple applications that also depend on information from each other that do different things. Um, when you're defining the network itself, you can then have them connect together that way. And so, and here's a few of the uh, um, devices we have that are um, that support IOX right here. Uh, this is not a complete comprehensive li list, but this is a few of them, and some of the language runtimes as well. Um, one of the things I also like to highlight is, besides the devices, the DevNet Sandbox um, supports IOX. So if you want to go and try out an IOX environment, the DevNet Sandbox provides um, a virtual lab. So it would be a virtual instance of IOX, is you can go there and reserve this instance, and then you can um, Play with it. You can you can use the you can deploy applications to it. We already have some tutorials set up for you to be able to do that, and you can um, get to your hello world quicker with um, IOX by using Sandbox. And so that way you don't yeah. There are plans to support Python three currently. Um, that's I don't re I don't remember where that is on the roadmap, but they 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 know that they're going to be support yeah. So they will be supporting it. Right now it's just Python two point seven. Um, and, and that is another thing. If you're using platform as a service as opposed to um, virtual machine or containers, platform as a service uh, currently only supports uh, Python 2.7 and Java. I think they support Java 1.7, 1.8. And then, so another thing, if you go to the uh, um, world of solutions right over here in 1-2, um, you'll see they have a they have an IoT section that shows off all these different routers and um, things here and, and switches and and servers and, and housings and it's actually really cool so I recommend please go over to World of Solutions and check this out over there as well. 
And so, um, and, and this is kind of talking about what I mentioned earlier. These are, um, these are the run times of the car, the, these are cartridges. And so um, IOX is based off of a Yocto um, distribution. Um, and Yocto is specifically geared towards embedded systems. And so that's why it's particularly important to IoT. Um, but currently, right now, they're only supporting 2.7 um, and then Java 1.7 and Java 1.8. Um, in the future, they, they plan on supporting other frameworks. Um, in the meantime, you can still deploy with containers. And that's one of the great things. So you can deploy um, LXC containers or um, Docker style containers. You can do that as well. And we'll get into more of that here in a second. And then when you do that, that's one I was mentioning earlier. You can, you can deploy in Node.js or even Golang and things like that. If you, depending on what your development team is writing in, um, containers might be the better platform for that. And, but that's going to depend, because if you, if you come back here, only not every, most of the platforms support containers, but not all of them. And actually, this, I need to update this slide. This one, this one doesn't. Actually, I think all these do. There, there's a, there is a, and that's why this list doesn't, doesn't include everything that has IOX on it, because there's a couple of uh, um, hardware platforms that don't support containers. But most of them do. And so that's a good um, option for you to be able to um, deploy in other languages if that's what you need. Um, so yeah, so the IOX applications themselves. So basically what it is is um, it's, a it's a compressed binary of everything you need for the application layer of your, of your project. It's basically just like any other container. And um, what it does is... Uh, Depend either either one of these services you're using here, depending on how you're deploying, um, it's gonna it's gonna package it up in such a way that uh, um, the IOX client, um, the, when you're using that to deploy your applications, it's gonna package it up so that way you can uh, deploy it to um, the IOX environments correctly. And and, it, and this goes over some of the things I've mentioned before. So you got the Docker tooling, platforms as a service, Linux container, um, kernel virtual machines. Um, less of them support virtual machines because this takes up a little bit more CPU resources. So what you have has to have, um, the hardware has to have more CPU resources for the VMs. But you can create um, some of the um, hardware platforms will support full VMs and you can run those on there as well. Um, See, I think I think the IE four thousands are the one or ones that support VMs. Uh, from what I remember, there's some other ones too, but I can't remember exactly which ones those are right now. <clears throat> and so, and, and and this gets more a little bit more specific on um, the same things I've mentioned before, and what you can do with those. So. Um, and another thing is just to, just to keep in mind, I just want to highlight this one right here. So on the Docker part and the Docker tooling, um, where the Docker is not being run directly on IOX. It's just using the development cycle of Docker to be able to deploy the applications. And so really, it's still more of an LXC container than anything else. Let's see. And so here's a here's a little bit of the file structure that you get when you when you package up your um, application to be deployed, and this is really any of the applications. And so um, the package.tar is going to contain that's going to have all, that's going to have your binary in it, and that's going to have all the information that you need to your uh, whether it's your container or your application. And in the package.yaml, this is where you define your um, your network, your CPU resources, your memory, um, everything your application will need to run on IOX itself. Um, and then um, you, can and you can define other resources like for um, what what, uh, descriptions of the application in here, and, uh, and then the artifacts break down kind of uh, the main application itself. And that's kind of the overview of uh, um, the aggregation of, uh, uh, I mean, the, the deployment of the applications. And so, and just like I was talking about before, you have the package.yaml, and this is, a, um, this is basically a human readable version of your description of your environment that you're going to deploy on the application itself. And see. And like I said before, it does the CPU, um, disk, memory, network resources, things like that. 
And here's an example of kind of what this would look like. So you have your, you'll start with your info. You'll, you'll give it the name of your app, the um, version of your app, the description of your applications, author link, this kind of thing. Here's your re CPU resources that you're going to. Um, and it, on this one right here, they have some predefined environments. So they have uh, tiny, so C1 tiny, C1 small. And those have specific um, um, outlined uh, resources. But you can also define them custom as well. So you can tell specifically how many CPU units um, you define to the uh, um, application, how, how much uh, disk space, and how much memory. So the, um, and memory is in megabytes. So um, so it'd be 32 megabytes here. But here, here's the deal. If you, you can go over your memory a little bit when you're deploying your applications, but you just need to be careful because if you're using, or I mean your CPU, you can go over the CPU resources a little bit. The um, IOX CAF will allow you to do that. But memory is a hard cap. If you go over your memory, you're gonna, it'll kill your application. So just one of those things to be aware. And then you also give it information on startup runtime, network interface that you'll be using. You can use um, a direct bridge network um, for the Etho one interface that it provides there, or you can also give it a NAT, and then that gives it a, and then that'll give it additional um, a network for that particular application. So, yeah, and then the and then you have the package INA file, kind of I was talking about before. Um, it's more for um, configuration values that you want to be um, defined for administrative use for the application. And, here, and here's kind of the overview of the cycle of development that you have. So when you, when you get started, you're going to code your application. So let's just say like a Python application. It's what a lot of the examples we give that you do in Python. And then you're going to compile and link that. And you're going to test and debug that application. And you, um, just kind of like normal. This is a normal application process at this point. And then you go through and you package your application up. and then. Um, this is when you use, start using IOX um, client or fog director, or you're already using your Docker tooling. You, um, and you're able to then upload that information to the platform itself through IOX client. It's get, you also install it through the same way, or fog director, and then you configure, and then you have that's all configured through the, and that's where you use the, the YAML file and things like that. And then, it, and then you can test and debug on the IOX platform itself. And then if everything's good, um, you can release. If not, you can kind of come back and redo the cycle again, just like most application development. Okay, so now we're going to get into building it. So things you'll need in your build environment, depending on how you want to deploy your application. Um, so you have the IOX client, which we mentioned before. Um, Docker platform. This will build your this will build your container images if you're not doing platform as a service. So if you're even if you want to use Python three, you maybe this is the, this is going to be the better way for you to go. And so you can you can build the the Docker image there, and then we can package that up. Um, and then the IOX SDK, and that's optional. And, that, and this is going to be more for the platform as a service right here. Um, and here's your target environment. We're trying to get it to the so. Um, IOX CAF Sandbox, that's what I was talking about earlier for the DevNet Sandbox. That's what you can go to and you can, um, it's free infrastructure, so that way you can use virtual instances of IOX and get hands-on experience with using these uh, um, products before you try that, before you go out and buy um, the IOX supported hardware to be able to do that. Um, and then you have IOX enabled hardware and that's the that's the part that's optional, but when, but um, if you go over to the DevNet Sandbox, what they they have a demo right over there, and that's one that I built. That it actually has the IR eight twenty nine router. It's in the back. They're running the application off of that, and so um, and that's kind of how that's working. And so when when you're using that, you just need to make sure you have the correct console cables, and you need to have the most current IOX image. Which when you have that, you'll have to get that off of software.cisco.com. So here's a conceptual overview of um, development for this. So th this could be a Mac or Windows. It doesn't really matter. Um, you have your IOX client, um, and then you have your VM host for maybe like Fog Director, if you're going to be using Fog Director. And this can be hosted right on your um, device there. Although I will say, in the sand if you're using Sandbox, um, Fog Director is already part of that. So you get two IOX. Um, 
um, instances, virtual instances, and then you get one instance of Fog Director that's already uploaded. And like I said, it's free infrastructure. And then um, you VPN into your private lab environment within the sandbox, and, um, and then you have access to all this right here. Um, and here's a few places you can find some sample code when you're, when you're looking to do your, your POC for um, IOX is you can go to S GitHub Cisco DevNet or you can go to GitHub Cisco IOX um, and then you can find um, all these applications here and you can go ahead and deploy them right there because they're pre-built. And, and what I would encourage you to do though is please go in and change the code um, to these thing, to these uh, these applications, and then try to redeploy and see how that goes, um, and then just try to just try to. I, I recommend testing the limits. That's how I learned best on these platforms as well. When I was first learning how to do all this, is I would go in there and maybe try to break it a little bit. And when you're using the sandbox, good thing is is if you really did mess it up, we can reboot it for you, and you have a fresh environment again. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to mess up the sandbox. If you go in there and you use that infrastructure and you break it, it's not like you just broke a router or something or a switch that's real expensive. You, you, we'll, we'll just go reset the environment for you. We'll get you right up and running again. So feel free to do um, really test the environment, test the waters on deploying applications there. So here's the platform as a service. So, um, and, it, and this is going to be based on the, the run times they support. So it's going to be Python 2.7.3 and um, Java 1.7, 1.8. Um, so you develop your code in Python. You, need to, you would definitely need to check your version because it won't support Python 3 if you're on that already. Um, and then this is where you're going to use the IOX client to be able to um, um, deploy that. But also make sure your version is correct. Um, if you're using 1.0, um, if, if you follow kind of what I have in the slides here, what I'm talking about won't work, so you definitely need to make sure you have version 1.2 when you're um, getting IOX client. And so, and then software.cisco.com, and there's the link there. And I believe the um, you can get these slides um, as well. I forget where they host those, but you, you can get a hold of these there. So here you're building your application. To get started, you can you can start with that GitHub repo I was telling you about. You can go to DevNet. You can get the um, you get the application here. You can do a Git clone. Um, if you just go to, if you take off the Git part and just go to this HTTPS Cisco template, you can just download the zip as well if you're not really familiar with GitHub and you just want to try it out. Um, and then you would review the, you would find the folder that um, after you downloaded this, and it would be the platform as a service Python folder. And it should have these, um, these items in the main.py, the package.yaml, the config, the requirements for your Python. And um, it should have everything you need in there. Um, and so you got that. And then you're going to need the IOX client, and you're going to need to um, check to make sure you have the right cartridge list. So on your IOX, in the sandbox, it's not going to be a big deal. All four of the current cartridges are already deployed to every single IOX instance. But if, you're, if you are testing on an actual device, you will need to go and download the correct cartridges for the runtime for platform as a service. So you'll need to get your Python cartridge, or you'll need to get your Java cartridge, and you'll need to make sure those are loaded onto your IOX device. Um, from there, since you have the pre-built application from GitHub, you can then use IOX the client to um, go into that, that same repo, and you would just say IOX client package space period. And that's going to package up um, everything based on the package.yaml. If your package.yaml, if you remove that or if you're not in the right directory, you're going to get an error at that point. So you need that package.yaml in there because that tells IOX how to build your application. Um, and then it's going to produce um, some of these things here. So you got your binary artifacts, extra crap. So be careful not to. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so be careful. And make sure there's no, 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 nothing extra in your repo as well. Because it's going to package that up too, and so um, just when you're naming your application, um, and this is where that section of the YAML you're going to define what it's called. Just remember what you're you're calling it. You can use your CCO ID or your initials or whatever, and you can call it Awesome App because you're all going to create awesome applications. So you can just call it. You just go ahead and call it Awesome, 
and then um, and then that's where you come. You still come back to IOX client, and then you're gonna you're gonna type in the command IOX. You can you can abbreviate. You can say app or application, but you can say IOX app install awesome app package tar. But this is assuming that you've already done the IOX client package space period because that creates this guy right here. And so once you've done that, you do this, and this is going to take that package and it's going to deploy it to your IOX instance. So it's going to put it on the router or the sandbox instance that you have running, the virtual instance, whatever it is. Um, and then you can also, once you have it loaded up through IOX client, um, you can't deploy from the local manager, which is the web, uh, the web page, but you can go through and then um, the, the, re the, the rest of everything else you can do, you can start the application, you can activate the application, you can delete the application, and you can also manage the application and so you can see the real-time um, resources that are being consumed right there by the, um, the application itself. And so, uh, if you if you weren't using the um, um, the website though, you would still deploy through the IOX, or you would still um, activate through the IOX client. So, IOX app activate, same app, awesome awesome app, and then IOX app start application. Like I said, you can also do this through the web interface, but the command line client does it as well. And then um, then the local manager for the web. Yep. And so, and this is where you could, you can use the, the local manager again to get the uh, um, information for the app itself and see how it's running, or you can use the client to IOX app info, awesome app, and this is going to give you information directly from the command line when you're using the IOX client um, of your of it of the um, the application, and then you can also console in, and so the application you have deployed you can go in and you can console into that application and if you're trying to debug it or see any other problems or maybe you're not getting connectivity, maybe it's like, hey, it's supposed to be doing this API call and from, the, from that end of the service, it's not even seeing anything. You can go in and even see if you can ping out because maybe your network configuration is not correct. So you can go in and console there and do a little bit more debugging at that point. So here's the Docker star tooling. And, it, and this is, it's going to be a similar process to how we did the platform as a service. It's going to be a little bit different. Um, you need the 1.11 doc, Docker or greater. Um, I believe they're on 1.13 right now. I forget what version. Um, but yeah, so you need to check your Docker version. Make sure your IOX client is one point, at least 1.2 or greater. Um, and if not, you can, you can download this from that link right there. And so, and we also have from the, that, that same repo I was telling you about before, the, um, the, ability, the, the files to build the Docker um, application right here are also there as well. And so you do the same thing. You review the Docker file. The Docker file is where, where you would define the build. So that's going to be the Docker build, flag T, application name, all that kind of stuff. And then you, you're going to have the same thing. You're going to have the, um, the Python file and then the package.yaml. You don't need the config.ini um, file in this one. And so, um, so one of the things that I um, forgot to put here, though, but like, like I said, you still, need to, you still need to use your Docker tooling. So saying Docker means we're assuming at this point that you have de um, deployed applications using Docker as well. So you still need to, once you've downloaded that information from the GitHub, you do need to make sure you build it with Docker first. So that's where you do the bu uh, Docker build flag T name of your application late and define the version of it there. And once you've done that, you can come through here and you can define it this way. So um, this is the IOX client doing this. In this case, this is deployed, this is deployed locally, but um, since the Docker is already built, but this application right here, this is on the, this is on the Docker hub. So this is actually publicly available um, to be able to get, you can get it off the Docker hub right now. So if you were this, if you if you wanted to skip the Docker build process yourself, you could just use this, and this is gonna the, your your Docker tooling will pull this image off of Docker Hub and then do it that way. So um, and this is a public uh, um, Docker application that's run in the Docker web. And so the other thing is make sure you have your space in your period. That's a, a common thing you miss when you're doing it. If you 
forget to do this, then it won't build your application. So, and just make sure there's no other um, things in your uh, file repo that shouldn't be there. And so, once again, um, name your application Awesome Docker because you're all going to create awesome applications. Um, and then the the process becomes the same uh, the same at this point. So, same as the platform as a service. Once um, once iOS client has your um, application um, packaged up. It's going to be the same information, and it's going to and it's going to install and it's going to load the um, the package into your um, iOS instance or your the I, uh, whether it's on a router or in the sandbox. And once that loads that up, you'll you'll be able to access it in the same way as local manager, that kind of thing. So the process uh, converges right here. iOS application activate, application start, and then you can also do this from the website as well. And then you're going to connect to the application in the same ways. And this is how you're going to do that there. And so um, once again, here's some of the resources you're going to need to be able to uh, accomplish your, um, to be able to do some of these applications, to do your, um, your proof of concepts, um, to be able to do this. So. Like I said, they, they have some Python applications that are already on iOS. So Cisco IOX, the, the BU group already has one up there. And then you get Cisco DevNet for GitHub. Then you have the developer portal. This is going to be your best information for um, IOX, especially if you're going to, even if you're deploying the platforms. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I've had people come to me at this conference asking me about, oh, hey, I was doing this thing and I found this tutorial, some random place about, um, how to configure iOS for um, using um, iOX. And so they, were, they had their IRA29, and it just wasn't working. Well, they ended up realizing that they didn't have IPv6 enabled. But if they had just gone here, and they would used the resources and the docs that were already provided here, they would have saved themselves a lot of time. So if you're looking to even configure the devices themselves for this, please visit DevNet. This is a very important. It's going to have all the information you need on how to do all that. So let me see. All right, and so that's, uh, that's my presentation right now. So make sure that you, uh, you fill out your, your session evaluation. This is how, this is how we get better as, uh, um, as presenters to be able to um, give you better presentations. And if there's things you'd, you would prefer have, uh, to have seen in this presentation or anything like that, um, please put that in evaluation if you want to put you know, Jock was just no good at this thing. You can, you can put that too. That's okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. And please do that, though, because this gets you your chance to win your Cisco Live t-shirt. Um, and so complete that via uh, the mobile app and that kind of thing. And, uh, and, but before we conclude, does anyone have any questions about um, IOX or um, building applications and then deploying them to IOX or anything like that? Yes. Sure. So his question was, uh, could he give uh, examples of use cases you would use in a real life environment? So um, one, of, one of the use cases is, so like for, um, like if you're using the IR829, I'm going to go with a hardware specific solution, is that's specifically a fleet router that can be deployed on trucks or buses or trains or things like that. So you're going to deploy them in a lot of different places on vehicles. And you're going to connect that information up. So if you um, are pulling information from the CAN bus or other sensors that, are, that you have activated on your um, vehicles, you can then use that right there. So instead of having to devel develop individual applications on a separate platform and having to develop the framework for that, IOX provides all that for you in a wrapped up, nice, easy solution. And plus, you're going to have to have a gateway anyways. So you're going to need that IR829. Or if it's not IR829, it's something else. You're going to have to have a gateway to be able to get that information out. And so IOX um, um, is on that gateway, and it allows that edge computing resource. And so this would allow you to be able to deploy those applications to gather that data that you have in the field on those devices. Another one that's come up quite often is um, offshore oil rigs. Is, um, and that, and that kind of, and that goes to, so the transportation is the um, idea, so like your buses or your trucks or whatever you have deployed. Um, 
the applications for that are um, obviously um, your, your communications are going to be intermittent sometimes. You're going to travel in places, a tunnel, or just in certain spots where you're going to have gaps in coverage, and so you're not always going to be connected. And iOS Compute allows that, because you can't just connect. And that's one of the things Fog supports is cloud is not everything that you can do, especially when you have intermittent connections or you have a lot of data to dump. Well, one of the things with uh, like offshore oil rigs, like I was mentioning, is typically they have a lot of sensors and they have a lot of data they collect, and it's and it's quite large just for a simple offshore oil rig, or even for oil rigs that are on land in the field. And so to be able to get that information and deploy it um, back up, but typically you're going to do data dumps and stuff like that. So this allows you to um, IOX VM was going to allow you to be able to get that information from the applications that you deployed there. And you can do that once a day or whatever it is you need to do. So you have that ability to be able to deploy applications that will do that easily. And then you also have the ability to um, correct those applications as you need it. And so that's the thing. You don't want to have to go out. It's expensive to have to go out to a field that's specially unmanned or um, places that are just hard to reach or if they don't have technical people there. This um, IOX provides you that environment so you can do this from your, um, your central locations, uh, so from um, your places that you have your developers and your IT guys, and they can um, have that hardware deployed there. And, or the app, sorry, they can have the applications deployed there, um, deployed back and corrected problems, or if they have new information they need to process that they hadn't had before, they can do that there. And that's kind of what IOX supports. It'll, it supports the, it makes fog computing easy. And so it makes it, it does it in such a way that it allows you to be able to do these things quickly, easily, less overhead, less training. If you have to train, if it's a steep learning curve for a product, then your, your team is going to take a long time to do it. It's going to be very expensive for you. But if you're using this, you're buying the hardware. I mean, the most uh, controllable resources you have in business are going to be people. It's not going to be the hardware. It's always going to be people. So. In this case, this, uh, this eliminates some of that. This eliminates a lot of that cost right there, and it allows le and it allows them spending less time having to use a platform that is not as it's something they custom developed or has to be worked on all the time, and that, that costs a lot more resources as well. So those are those are some of the use cases. Um, let me come around to you. Yes. Um, so his question is the best uh, practice for securing the application. So um, in this case, I, uh, having iOS on these devices is, your, is going to be your best way to secure the application. I mean, the other thing is it's going to be your basic development at that point. So you're going to want to make sure you're using um, TLS, HTTPS, if you're using any of that communication. But you're going to want to also make sure that if it's going to be on your network, you have a VPN connection that's connected on that router that funnels all that traffic through there. So all your connections going to, so at every level, it's going to be encrypted. And so that's, that's going to be your best practice. You're going to want to make sure to use uh, best standard practices for any web um, on your application. So any web security, and then you're going to, um, or communication security, and then you're going to want to also be able to use the secure, um, a, your, the secure features of iOS itself. So on the actual router, you're deploying those applications with uh, a VPN connection to your private network, at the at the at the very least. Did you have any other questions? No. Okay. Any anyone else have any other questions? All right. Um, thank you for um, coming to building applications with IOX, and please fill out the survey. And I appreciate your time.